Okay, everybody, I'm back at you. Joe Mastalia here from Deep Pasquale Salon Systems. Well, it's been a hell of a two days. I hope you've enjoyed it. Our last presenter will be Goldwell, but before they come up, I want to thank my partner, Dasha, and Licensefy for her help, her support, her inspiration, and together with her team and the team here at Deep Pasquale Salon Systems, we want to thank everyone for participating in what we think is groundbreaking, a virtual distributor manufacturer show, and hopefully we'll see everybody here next year. Hello, and welcome to the Deep Pasquale first ever virtual hair event. I'm Steven Picciano, National Artist for Goldwell, and I'm so excited to be here with you today to share some really great blonding techniques that I think are super relevant for where we're at seasonally right now, um, as well as some awesome styling techniques. And the coolest thing about today is not only am I gonna share with you my favorite things that I'm doing behind the chair right now, you also get to purchase some of the formulas that I'm giving and the products that I used through special deals only available until April 14th. So this is the beautiful Emily. With Emily's color, she came in blonde with a deep root and kind of one note and off tone. So what we discussed through our consultation is making her blonde feel more luxe, making it feel more expensive by utilizing foil techniques with a highlight and a low light placement, um, giving us the ability to really create as much iridescence in her hair as possible. This year at Goldwell, we're talking about blonde your way. And what that means essentially is that blonde is not just one thing. I mean, when we think blonde, we generally think Emily, but there's so much variation into what blonde means. So is blonde a caramel in a brunette? Is blonde a chocolate brown in a rich brown? Is blonde as high blonde as we have here? But when we're talking blondes, the thing that we really want to consider most is how much iridescence and light reflection we're creating. So we'll get into how we do that a little bit later with our toning application, but I just want to show off Emily's color first. So one thing I love about this placement is that there are absolutely no lines through the entire hairline, no matter where it sits. Come this way a little bit more, uh, just like that. Perfect. So even through the nape, not a single hairline. So Emily's ponytail is perfect no matter what. Go ahead and turn. Let's show that off. See, told ya, mm -hmm. right? All the way through. And when I move Emily's hair left or right, there are no seams in the front. There's no harsh outgrowth. It is a completely seamless, effortless blonde that will grow out for months to come. That's the thing when working with clients who don't necessarily want to be in the salon very frequently or models like Emily, I have to make sure that my work can live on for six months at a minimum without needing much retouching. So working through creating a diagonal back placement, which I'll show all this to you, but working on diagonals is the best way to create softness and strength at the same time. So when I'm working on a diagonal, I have a 45. I can be diagonal close to vertical, which will give me a stronger line and a diagonal close to horizontal, which will give me a stronger spill, right? So soft line, strong outgrowth when we're in the front, working through here. If this were too vertical this way, I'd get a stripe. If this is more horizontal and like this, what I create is a lot of softness, yeah? Then working through the back, staying horizontal gives me the beautiful spill and strength of color that we need to see through the front of this blonde. All right, so let's get started with our technique application. Emily, I'm gonna bring you back in just a little bit. We're gonna get on some mannequins. Thank you. So we said goodbye to our lovely Emily for a few, and now I'm gonna catch you up on the blonding technique that we placed into her hair. So you'll notice the natural starting level of this mannequin is a little different than Emily's, but the reason that I'm using a brown mannequin is so that you can see the foil placement happen in real time. The bleach will, well, the lightener rather, will contrast the hair much better than working on a blonde mannequin. So to catch you up on where we are, we started the technique application in the back. So notice how the diagonal back sections 
are pretty much like nearing horizontal, right? So what that will do is give us the strength we need, but maintaining some softness as well. So working through the right side, the left side, and into the front left quadrant. Diagonal back slightly more diagonal than the diagonal horizontals through the back section, but just a little bit steeper of an incline just for some extra softness. But the beauty of this technique is that you really get to choose each and every section of light in the front of the mat, uh, in the front of your model or your client. So what that allows you to do is make sure that you are truly creating something seamless and soft. Um, so working through that front section, taking our tail comb and simply, so if I wanted to be as diagonal back as I could, I would put my arm at to a 45. I'm gonna remind myself that I don't wanna be that severe. So tilt forward a bit, take your first parting and we will put a highlight into here. So one thing that I love about this technique is that you can do as many or as few foils in the section as you'd like. Obviously, the blonder you'd like to be, the more you'll include. But it is so effortlessly, like the movement is so effortless through the whole technique that you really don't have to worry about whether or not uh, it will be blonde enough. You know, I find in the salon, when we're working on a brunette client and we're trying to build in some dimension, which is such an incredible thing to do, it generally takes about two and a half appointments before they're accidentally a blonde, right? And then we're looking to build in shadow. So a technique like this, where all of the lines will bleed over each other, will really help to make sure that we can demonstrate some restraint for those deeper clients, but also allow us the ability to get as light as possible for our super blonde clients. So closing in those foils, working through this section. So taking a decent amount of space, obviously here because you guys don't wanna watch me micro foil this entire head, but enough that we will build the strength we're looking for. So these are all soft weaves. Working through. Make sure you really allow your comb to contour the head. You want it to be as close as you can get taking just enough lightener on the brush to saturate the section well without having too much mess of product by the regrowth. Working down the section, if I feel my foil jumping, grab by the top, pinch vertically and pull that hair back down and continue to saturate the ends. So in your promotion, so I'm working with our Silk Lift Premium Lightener. Um, you'll notice in the promotion on the screen, we're giving you Silk Lift Strong and 9%, 9% uh, or 30 volume. So Silk Lift is the most conditioning lightener in our portfolio. And it actually helps to make sure that the hair is staying as like healthy and rich as it can through our application. Um, so 9% is not a challenge for, especially for this time of year. So two light, one deep, this is a slice. The reason we're slicing through here is because we're looking to build strength. So this is our Colorants, seven beige gold and six, uh, and eight rather beige pearl. So the perfect combination, if you look at the gold ball color wheel, you'll see that these two shades perfectly uh, complement or oppose each other on the wheel. So that will mean I will get the richest, most neutral, perfect brown I possibly can. I really like for all of my contour shades to emulate the natural base of the client. Do I wanna make them a little richer? Sure. Should I make them a little cooler? Sometimes. But always, always, always try to emulate the color that grows from the head. That will give you the most natural result. Um, so a couple more, one light in here. So notice how on this one I left the hairline out. 
This small piece here will act as a veil to cover so when there are no lines through that front. I promise you won't miss it because there will be light right here next to it. Uh, slice. This weave, there's a lot of density in this section, so a little bit of a thicker weave is much more helpful. The strength of our section needs to match the strength of the density of hair. Otherwise, you're doing all this work and it won't be seen. Okay, going in and applying. And making sure I bring that hair down. So here's just pro tip. I don't like to spaghetti and meatballs, the end of the hair, right? So you have two options. Either you A, grab your comb, lift it up, bring it into the saturation zone and paint, or you B, just whirl it around into a J, making sure that you fully saturate. The reason I don't like to twist and twirl is because Leitner's job is to go into the hair, open the cuticle quickly, and diffuse anything it makes contact with. Well, if I'm creating knots towards the ends, the chances of me having compromise in my end result are relatively high. Um, so, no spaghetti and meatballs. All right, last section in the side. Okay, working through, diagonal back, close to horizontal. Foil in. Painting towards the back, working forward towards the front. Coming down that strand and painting all the way through. So I showed you the J technique before. Now I will very simply show you the other. So lift it up, bring it into the area of full saturation, saturate all the way down and through, and that will have fully even lift and zero compromise on those delicate ends. Like that. Okay, and this completes the last section of the side. Notice there is a bit of hair on top. This hair here is very purposeful. The reason this hair is here is because without this, the light below and the light above are simply not that special. This depth makes this and this stand out. So it's very, very important that we leave a veil in between our sections. All right, now we are working into the top section. So that top section, because of all of our diagonals, end up creating a teardrop. So through this teardrop section, we are going to work in the same diagonal back fashion, but once we cross halfway over the head, we're going to change the direction. And what that will do is completely allow the foils to overlay each other um, and give us a really seamless effect. So. I'm gonna do this in just a few foils because I know you guys are at home, but that doesn't mean you wanna sit here and watch this forever. So, a few light. Um, there is one special technique in this area that I do wanna show you. Um, so we'll get to it quickly, I promise. So first, diagonal back all the way through. So much faster doing highlight retouches, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, so now I'll show you that special trick. So this is called an alternate weave foil. And the reason that I do this is because, have you ever had the challenge with a blonde where you're like, I think we need to add some shadow or, high, or low light or dimension and you see the, all the color run out of their face and they're completely like, that is absolutely not going to happen. I don't want black stripes. Well, when we lighten this way, or add dimension this way, I should say, 
we don't lose any space of blonde in order to add depth. So what we're going to do is take our first weave, work through, slice out the inside part of that weave. This becomes our low or our contour and the highlight will go right in next to it. So what we'll get instead of color that sits in front and behind each other, they will sit in and out of themselves or left and right, right next to. Okay, so there's our contour piece. Release that weave. And this will go right down on top. My clients love this. I love doing this because I really like building depth in on the surface, but I really hate creating stripes of depth or, or a movement that simply doesn't feel fluid. Um, and I feel like this is the best way to alleviate that. Um, I would follow that with a highlight. Um, you don't have to, don't overthink this. Don't worry about how many slices, how many weaves, how many both, how many low lights. Just kind of let the hair talk to you and do what you think is right. Um, in super dense areas or areas that are very well hidden, go ahead and add a slice. In areas that are very, very close to the hairline, maybe we create a micro weave or a baby light in areas that are, say, behind the ear. Maybe we're working with a macro weave or something that's going to give us a little bit of substance. All right, so this will be our last foil and on this side. And then we are going to relocate ourselves and create an angle from the front. Well saturated, okay. So now we are past the central point of the head, right? We're through the apex. So now what we need to do is simply in the salon, turn our bodies to stand at the new back point. For you guys today, I'm going to turn our head, okay? So when I'm working here, this point becomes the next veil between the top section and the side section. Now I'm going to work diagonal forward and finish out this section by choosing each point of lightness on the hairline. So working through and see here, I chose this little bit of hair. This is the important part there. That is what gives us this really seamless foil application technique. Okay. Okay, we're just going to do a few foils in the front because I'm sure you get the idea. But choosing, so things to look out for in this part of the technique. Um, if there is a widow's peak, make sure one of your sections or one of the weaves you choose incorporates the furthest point of the widow's peak. Okay. And choose the front. So kind of swinging my comb around and really picking that front piece out. Um, can you do an alternate weave in this section? Of course. If you want to add depth through the front, no problem. A lot of my clients right now, considering we're getting into spring and summer hair, um, are requesting to be lighter and brighter in the front. So I would leave it out of this section and just focus on lightening. Close up our foil. 
and continue through just two more and we will finish out. Um, in the salon, I would probably do about somewhere between six and nine foils in this front section. Um, more likely seven and nine though, because whenever we're creating something that we're designing, odd numbers are always more attractive than even. So when the eye sees even numbers, it's looking for balance. When the eye sees odd numbers, it feels the balance already, and it kind of gives you an easier way to not notice that things are different. Things are different in a good way. Okay, back down. And our last foil in this section, before we jump into toning. Okay, also important to leave a small veil of depth on this outside corner. If we overfoil, we take away everything that's special. Because one of the things Emily had said to me yesterday when we actually first met was that she felt like at this point her blonde lacked so much dimension that she should have just been a single process. Um, and she was completely correct in saying that. So what that tells me is no shade, but her previous colorist needed to understand better the importance of depth and dimension and not overwork. I mean, think about it this way. How much does a full foil cost? How many foils are in a full foil? If we overfoil every single client, how much of our work are we giving away for free? Right? Okay. And that will complete the technique application. So see these foils here overlap those foils going back in the opposite direction. So like this. So what that will give us even parted on the center is a completely seamless effect. So now let's get into everyone's favorite part of blonding. And personally, my, I think it's the most important. I think laying in the foils well and having clean work is really, really efficient and important, but how you put your mark on it, how you finish, the luxury element you're adding in by your toning application is really what sets you apart from other stylists. So the second part of our first deal is the colorance formulation of 10 natural and 10 gold with at cool pink. Um, all three of those things will be used. So in this, in, in order to create iridescence in a blonde, I like to work with two complementary tones. So 10 beige gold with cool pink. This will be our lighter, brighter. Um, and 10 natural, 10 gold with cool violet. Just two drops. Um, the reason for that is the cool violet and cool gold uh, and will act as a neutral grounding shade where the 10 beige gold and cool pink will add as that brilliant like opaly reflection that you see that's actually like cool and warm at the same time. Um, so we've already gone in and utilized that same uh, shadow formulation in a shadow root application in toning. So the low light or contour is now acting as the shadow. So that is done diagonal back again, all the way through stretching through the regrowth, tapping in in the front. So the reason that we do that is because if light were to bounce off the head, I would get a lot more absorption of light through the back and a lot more reflection of light through the front. As the most, nine times out of 10, you have to make the most natural expression of color or color feels the best when we emulate how light actually works. So if this round would absorb light, it would be deeper down here. The shadow must come down and through. Um, Conversely, this would be the lightest and brightest area, hit the sun the most, the shadow should be the least deep in that front zone. And once we do that, in order to create iridescence, we're gonna work with our brush tip applicator simply because A, I feel like it helps to preserve product as much as possible, um, and B, I just prefer the application. It's a lot neater. I like to wear white sneakers at work and I don't like them full of color. Um, and I just find it to really stretch the color further so I know I'm not gonna run out my application. So very simply, starting in the back, once that shadow is on, I'm gonna start with the brighter formulation. So our 10 beige gold and at cool pink. And I'm gonna work in what 
in Blondier way, we're calling a fish scale pattern. So in that fish scale pattern, essentially I'm gonna use the sectioning hook and I'm just gonna scoop into a circle, right? So in this section, what I'm doing is creating that front spill of color, making that perimeter nice and bright. So working through, applying my color, pulling down, fully saturating, And I will just lay this onto a foil just to collect to keep my client's neck clean. Um, not that I have to place into a foil. Will it stay? We'll see together in real time because we are live. <laughs> uh, no, it won't. So we don't have to do that. We're gonna do the same thing again to the other side. Let me get this a little cleaner for you guys. Okay, I don't want to clip my free ends into my shadow, so we'll clip it forward. So I'm going to give this a spin for you. And we will take that same formulation and put it through the ends of the back. And then because we took two rounded sections through the bottom, what we will create is a third fish scale in the center that we will use the more neutral formula of 10 natural, 10 gold, and cool violet. So we just let that hang, clip this away, pick up our other formula. See right here, fish scale this way. See? So what we're doing is we're creating pockets of depth um, without, without being darker. You know, like, depth is a funny word in blonding because Blonding is perceived all through light reflection and light absorption. So by adding a more absorbent shade or cooler shade, what I'm creating is depth, essentially. Even though it's at the same level, it's tone on tone, um, I'm creating a lot of visual interest, which plays into iridescence. Okay, so again, with my cool pink and 10 beige gold. So I put the 10 natural and 10 gold into that deal for you because I, I really feel like um, we underuse certain shades in the portfolio, sometimes because we don't understand what their purpose really is. So 10 natural, is what gives us like a grounded tone. It's, you know, a natural level 10. It's not gold, it's not beige silver, it's not beige gold. It just has like a purity to it and a cleanliness that I really like. And it accepts cool violet really well. So we're able to take 10 gold, which is our most reflective shade, um, and make something that feels more like wheat rather than sunshine, right? Um, and what that also does is it creates a really great starting point for the 10 beige gold to play off of. Sorry, she's a little tangly. All right, so now again, working in through this section here, merging from my shadow to my light color. Um, we're in the back, so I'm not worried about the color dragging down and creating any initial depth. Whatever we get, I'm happy with. And then this last top section, we will put our brightest color. I don't like how naughty she is, so we'll comb it out a bit. Okay. And then we will repeat the same thing on either side. Um, putting our 10 beige gold cool pink closest to the face. Okay. Working through, we'll go to this side first. Oh, that's why. She needs to be pink. See how the brush tip really helps me drive the color into the hair? Um, 
tolerance works best when it is not over manipulated. Um, you can work it into the hair, but if we turn colorants from a colored shade into a white foam, it's not going to quite give us the uptake of color that we're hoping for. So I feel the brush tip helps me to really drive the color in without having to over manipulate. I'm working in through the back. I'm gonna pre-section this because, so this will be our deep. This will be this one. Okay, so our first shade here, our 10 natural and 10 gold. So I just want to oppose what is next to it. Um, it doesn't have to be rocket science, it just has to be pretty. So what, look what's next to your shade, put the opposite. Right here, oh, I've got a little color on my jacket. Use our 10 beige gold. Um, could you make this super, super complicated and take really small sections? Sure. Would you get more iridescence? Maybe. Right? Could you do this in maybe three sections overall? Yeah, you absolutely could. Sometimes I would just put the more reflective formulation on the front zone, right? From the high point of the fringe back to behind the ear um, and put my deeper shade everywhere else. Sometimes I like to do all the things. Sometimes I don't. All right, so we've got two of our pink. This one needs to be our neutral. Working in. Elevating up to not drag down my shadow. and applying just back and laying it flat. All right, and we repeat the exact same thing on the other side. And that's essentially how we toned the beautiful Emily. So that wraps up our color segment. Let's take one last look at the beautiful Emily. So I hope that you see now, as we're looking through the color, you know what was done, you can see better all that dimension that we created. See our color on shade living beautifully inside the warm and cool blonde living together simultaneously, really creating a very, very beautiful iridescent blonde shade, um, but still with a good amount of shadow. Um, and I will tell you, like, you don't have to shadow this technique every time in order for it to work. Um, adding the shadow for Emily bought, buys her some more time, right? Like colorants last for 25 shampoos. So if I add a shadow in, what I'm gaining is 25 shampoos of security. And then when that fades away, it just feels lived in and soft. Whereas if I didn't do that, totally fine, but it would feel brighter initially and then outgrown just a bit faster. So because Emily is a busy, busy model, I like to make sure that she gets as much time out of her color appointment as possible. But you can really see how the cool and warms are playing nicely together there. I hope it looks as shiny on camera as it does to me. But it's really, really beautiful shade of blonde. All right, so now we're gonna do some styling. So your second deal of the day is for Kerasilk. So this is your Kerasilk volumizing shampoo conditioner and volumizing spray, which is exactly what I use to prep Emily's hair. Um, the reason I love this shampoo is because it's super nourishing. The ingredients are pharmaceutical grade and what you get from it is the most volume without all the grit and stick of your typical volumizing product. Like Emily's hair still feels very, very, very soft. Um, we're going to do two looks today. The first one is going to be something that I feel, so I live in New York um, and being here in New Jersey, I feel we share a very similar clientele and especially a very similar bridal market. Um, I've noticed that a lot of my clients lately are getting married in like big castle type venues and the dresses have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and more ornate, which means the hair needs to complement that in the softest way possible. So we're going to create a twist on a chignon, like where a chignon meets a French twist. So it's very, very simple to do um, and it's super beautiful when it's all done. 
So first and foremost, we're just going to take some bits from Emily's hair, um, just to see what we're liking down. Um, we will need that curling iron plugged in, please. Right, I just want to hit these front guys with the curling iron once we're all set. But essentially, this entire look comes from uh, product, a ponytail, and some strategic movement of the hair. So first and foremost, I'm just gathering the hair. And what I'm doing is essentially working on the distribution, right? And deciding whether or not Emily's head shape requires more lift through the crown. Um, I think it does, but I don't necessarily need to tease this. So what I'm going to do is work with Dry Boost, a texturizing spray, to give me some lift through this crown area without too much grit. Maybe we'll add just a little bit of strength in there. But when I work with Dry Boost, I want to spray to the scalp and then up through about the bottom half of the hair. That's what's going to allow me to really have a structured shape when I pull it back. Um, working with a wide tooth comb. Let's flip this back. See, just from Dry Boost alone, I got all this lift. This hair is going to come back into one ponytail. Okay, ponytail distribution is key. Um, I'm not looking to make something so sleek that I couldn't change my mind and add some texture in the future. So I like the way that a wide tooth comb distributes the hair, right? So two plastic ties together, one may break, two will be fine, around a ponytail in the center of the head or center of the back of the head. Um, I don't want to make this too, too tight, but I do want it to hold. So three times around is about good. Now I'm going to take this, slide it out a bit, about there, yeah? Now, most of the time when we see like topsy-turvies on Instagram or um, if you're as old as I am on television when you were a kid, it always went vertically, right? In or out, up or down. For this, because I feel that things are moving more vertical in shape, but horizontal in their movement, where, bear with me, like French twist meets Xing Yang, right? So I'm gonna take my fingers, put them in the spot, grab the hair, and pull it through. Okay, what that creates then once I suture this I get essentially this. So I get this beautiful seam through the side here, right? And on this side, I have the perfect pocket to roll this hair up and create that chin yang. yeah? So one thing that's super helpful with bridal styles is generally speaking, we do wanna make sure there's durability and a good amount of size to that shape. So without having to use too much product, let's groom this hair a little bit. I'm going to put a bit of hair padding. Right? So this was a donut. Cut the string, pull it apart, and then I cut it down. And I'm going to take it just like this, and I'm going to put it on the ends of the hair, just like that. So with this, I don't need to use a hair tie. I can use the pad to, let's go this way wrap and roll up this hair gives me the perfect anchor for the shape and it'll hold my pins very nicely um, also for bridal work i like to work with large pins um, i don't know about you but i got married once and i didn't have all these things in my hair but when i got home i did not want to do anything let alone take a hundred bobby pins out of my hair right so anchor with large pins you can use far, far less, and you still get the same amount of strength. So that was two pins, and she's essentially locked in, right? If you don't feel super secure about that, or you have a wild bride on your hands, add some more. But realistically, because of the hair pad and the shape, we're good to go. Um, some diamond gloss through this bond. It needs a little bit of grooming, right? Like, 
from far away, this probably looks pretty shiny, but up close, remember not all guests are in your camera. You're going to need a little bit of grooming just in the direction of the hair. Make sure there's no tangles there. Yeah, and a little bit of spray. Um, Shape-wise, I think this looks great. Her head shape is beautiful, but I want a little more lift. So because there's a ponytail there, I can go in, pinch, and just pull that hair up, just creating a really beautiful soft shape. How's that look? Turn for me, dear. Great. So another thing too, if we have little pretty hairs and things, use them. Because if we don't use them, we're going to fight them. So rather than fight them, let's make them feel purposeful. Um, and then we just need to add a little bit of movement to the front. So I do like this straighter. It is a little bit 90s. It kind of has that very like, um, I know it reminds me of like Charlize Theron movies when she was young. And um, what's that one? The Devil's Advocate, I think. Um, so back in the front, take these little pieces. You have to distribute them out. This one we're gonna curl in and pull down just for some movement. This one we're gonna curl away. So I'm using an inch and a half Varus curling iron simply because I don't want too much turn. I just want movement. So I'm going to over direct this section towards the opposite eye, put my clamp down, turn, turn, polish those ends and come out. I don't want it to look too forced. Um, there's really nothing super luxe about like really, really, really forced hair. And I feel like all of my brides these days are really looking for something that just feels kind of like it happened, kind of like it was thrown up, um, but in a really, you know, expensive and cheap kind of way. So a little bit of dry boost. Dry Boost is a texture spray. And then we're going to finish with a bit of hairspray after we go ahead and open this up. So in deal number three, Magic Finish and Big Finish Hairspray. Um, this is the Carousel Dual Purpose Hairspray, but Magic Finish for the lightest hold hold and shine together. Big finish for your locking hold. Um, and if you need super exaggerated volume, go ahead and use that double boost on the roof. All right. So here we have look number one. Go ahead and stand. Can she stand? Can we stand? No. Give a turn. <laughs> Now working into our second look. So um, with this one, I feel like this is something we're seeing on social media so, so much, sorry. Um, and I find that brides go one or two ways. Either they want it like low, soft, and sleek like we just did, or they kind of want something up high and visible from the front. This is for brides that are wearing any kind of tiara or headpiece, which are also trending now. Um, and I'm gonna show you a really simple way to do it, um, creating this shape using ponytails. So first and foremost, again, we're gonna double them up because I don't want them breaking. If it breaks, my whole look is ruined. Um, and for this, let's turn to the side. We're gonna use two ponytails. One we leave here, at the, the right in between the apex and the crown, and one right below that so we can create a shape that lives off of the highest point of the back, allowing us to create shape that goes from the jaw and up. Um, whenever we are creating up styling looks, the client's face shape is the most important thing. Um, if we want to accentuate the face shape, analyze it and copy the shape. So for a heart shaped face, uh, tight through the sides and full through the top will be the most accentuated. Um, conversely, for a heart shaped face, the softest thing would be low volume and 
with at the bottom. I'm like, what am I saying? Uh, let's use just a duck bill clip just to get this out of the way. We'll do the back ponytail first. Okay. So whenever I'm creating a back ponytail, go ahead and tilt your head back for me, sweetheart. So when I take the head back, what that does is it allows this skin to stretch a bit. And when I bring the head back forward, it's very, very tight. Um, that allows us to get it up as high as possible. Um, and for this, because we've given Emily such a seamless color placement, um, let's show it off. So a little bit of spray, spray in the direction of the hair. Um, spraying against the direction of the hair will create fuzz that sticks out. Spraying with it, the power of the spray will actually help to smooth it down. So our first, first ponytail will be right here. Three times around is more than fine. And cinch, okay? Ponytail one. Ponytail two is everything else that we don't plan on keeping down for softness. Uh, let's go ahead and kick some bits out. Use the front tip of your brush to really, oops, sorry, honey, spill as much out as naturally comes out. I don't like to fight those pieces. I like to allow them to me be purposeful and they kind of become like the client's like signature bits, you know? Um, if everything we do, we try to force, I feel like that's how we lose as stylists because at the end of the day, especially if we're talking bridal, you know, if she's Italian like me, there's 300 people there waiting to hug her. That's 300 bracelets and watches that could pull the hair. That's, you know, 300 spins on the dance floor. There's a lot of things happening that if everything is just too, too perfect, the chances of it coming undone are quite likely. Okay, so now I'm going to take my first loop and not pull it all the way through. Yeah? Second loop, I should have done the same, but we're not gonna do that because we'll wrap it. So, this will go up and through. Right, we want this loose and soft. I want the hair to spill. And we're creating, essentially, a messy bun. Um, for this, again, we'll work with large clips. We'll go into the hair, onto the base, and push. We'll comb that up. Into the hair. Um, you know what? Let's add a little bit of, sorry, let me just redo this really quick. I think Emily's hair needs just a little bit of coaching. We wanna make it a little bit bigger. So what we'll do, dry boost. In and through. And then we're gonna do something called peeling. So we're gonna take the hair up and just flick it off the ponytail. What this does is it creates a lot of size, but it doesn't lose all of the texture. So let's do this to both. Okay, now we can take that hair, twist it, that'll give us more interest, and then wrap it around that base of the first bun, or the first ponytail, and pin it in. Okay, and now the same thing, opposite direction, twist. Let me smooth this bits on the top, but I'm just raking through with my hands. And we'll go the other way, like that. Okay, once my shapes are in, I can manipulate them, I can pull them out. And something that I want to do is just close this gap. So take my tail comb, my comb rather, and just comb the hair up and then sink a pin right into there. All right, so I'm gonna use my comb to hold it. 
and take, actually for this a smaller bobby pin, and just go right in under my shape. Okay, perfectly closed. Same thing on the opposite side. Let my comb sit and hold it for me. Right in, turn for me. This is where the seam was, so I'm not gonna open this pin. I'm just gonna let it go in and close. Take that right out. Need a few more pins just to create some stable shape. So see, it was just a little fuzzy, but if there's fuzz, that means I have support and there's smooth hair right next to it. So if I just roll that hair forward, it becomes smoother. Then I can go in and push. All right. And there we have look number two. She needs a little shine. So if I'm adding shine, Shine and matte are important. So shine on where we want to see light bounce. And then dry booth, a matte product, on what should absorb light. All righty. All right. And there we have look number two on the beautiful Emily. Uh, for this deal, this would be your hairspray for sure. So magic finish, big finish. Definitely worked in through. And if this were the look I were going for from the beginning without doing another, I would prep with that double boost, blow dry up towards the base of that ponytail, and that'll create the most durable, lasting shape for an all-night affair. And that will conclude our hour-long segment today. I thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here with me. I hope you really enjoyed the iridescent blonde segment as well as the styling that we did. I hope you take advantage of these promos. Um, they're only available until April 14th, so please, please, please take advantage. Thank you again once more. Thank you to Deep Pasquale for having me here for your first live virtual show. And uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you so much.
Thank you.